Hello, this is a demo of how Fortify could integrate with your DevSecOps environment. This is Fortify Software Service Center, the centralized management console of Fortify, where you can see all the application where you are doing application security testing here. So you have the inventory of all the application that you have tested so far. Then you see in here, I have access like Maurizio, that is an administrator. So if you go to the user part, we see in the local user, we can see that Maurizio Di Stefano in here is an administrator. And then I created two more users. One that is Mauri developer, that you see will access only to the web port application. And then a Mauri security lead with a different role, security lead, that will have access as well only to web port. Okay, so this is the environment I prepare. Then, if I go to my Eclipse as a Maori developer, I could start using the first plugin that is available with Fortify, that is called Fortify Security Assistant. So this is a spell checker real-time plugin for developers available for Eclipse with a student IntelliJ that automatically, while the, um, the developer is, uh, is typing the code, it will detect vulnerability. Okay, so it's, it's a real time spell checker plugin. And in here, you see that for it's automatically, it found several critical vulnerabilities. And four of them are in the backdoors of uh, Java class. Okay, so if you go in here, we can expand it. We can click it and see the four critical vulnerability cross scripting persistent. And then we can also open the description and see all the details of the vulnerability, recommendation on how to fix it, and this will help uh, with all the reference the developer to fix the vulnerability, okay? So in here, you can see that is a real-time plugin because if I try to simulate that I fix this vulnerability by commenting it, you see that it disappear one of the vulnerability and it go from 21 to 20. So if I could keep simulating that I'm fixing the vulnerability, you see that it will decrease and the four vulnerability will disappear. As soon as in, I introduce again the, the, the line of code, so the vulnerability, you see that those vulnerability will appear again. That's why it's a spell check real time plugin, because it's something that the developer is told at the first time and then he forget about it. And if a new vulnerability is detected, the security assistant will uh, will uh, we'll, uh, analyze and detect it as well. Now, let's try to do a real full scan by using the integration of Fortify with the remote scan central architecture. So we try to, to select the workload application, okay? And then we, we ask for a remote uh, uh, complete scan of Fortify using the scan central SAS architecture, okay? So we'll, uh, we request this scan to be initiated, and then we wait for the uh, client plugin within the, the plugin inside of Fortify Eclipse to connect with the controller of the scan central trust architecture, and then to initiate the scan. Okay, so at the moment is uh, is connecting to it. So this won't be a local scan; it will be a remote scan by using the scan central trust architecture. And you see, eventually it will tell me whenever I finish the scan, where to put the result. And we decide to put in web code one, version one. And that's it. So the scan will be initiated. And now I will receive a job scan ID in case I will need to investigate where the scan is uh, and to receive also log status and information. So you see, this is the job token of the scan. So if we go back to the soft tissue center, to the scan central SAS tab, we now see, you see that a new scan is arriving. A new scan of web code is currently running. And this is possible because there are few sensors available. In this case, you see there are four sensors available, okay? that are managed by a controller. So there will be a controller 
that will uh, get the payload of the of the source scan dependency from Eclipse, and then it will dispatch it to one of the sensors so that the scan will be performed. And so we can see then the status of the scan in here, and then we will see that the scan status will go from running to complete eventually. And then there is also the possibility to select pool of sensor. So in here, you have the possibility to create different pools and assign sensor to different pool based on different methods. That can be, for instance, uh, how fast we want the scan to be, or based on the business unit of the application, so we can create custom pool. Okay, so this is quite this is, uh, easy to do by selecting a, a pool name, okay, by then selecting the, the kind of a sensor we want to belong to this, uh, to this pool quite easy to, to create. And then if we go back to the scan uh, request, we will see then in, in two seconds that the, um, the status would be to scan upload. You see, now it's uploaded, okay? And now we will be able to see the result by clicking on the application itself, and we will see all the results of the scan. Now I'm back to the Fortify Software Service Center and I log in as a Maori security lead. You see that this time as a Maori security lead, I can only see the web, web application that has been assigned to me that it will go in this case. Okay, so if I go in here, I can see the result of good work and see if I go within one of these, the details uh, of the application, I can navigate uh, uh, the, the details of the vulnerability, I can navigate the vulnerability from the entry point to the sync point. And in here, I will have all the details of the vulnerability and a sample on how to fix it. Then I will have recommendation of it as well, and reference uh, to international standard like common weakness enumeration, OWASP, PCI, GDPR, and so on. You can even have additional uh, information for you developers apart all the information that uh, we already show about the details, recommendation, the vulnerability that 45 already does. Okay, so if you filter, for example, for critical, and we select one SQL injection. We can see that all the details that already Fortify uh, has got. We have this additional button that is get training. So if we click on this, we see that is a, this is related to an SQL injection that I found in my code in the update profile.java line 248. If I click on get training, I will be redirected to the secure core warrior web page. In here, as a developer, I can challenge other developers in order to go up and down our ranking, and then I can enter into the uh, game mode. And what I will see in here, I will see an example of the same kind of category, a SQL injection that I had in my software service center in here as well. So I can play a uh, exercise and fix the vulnerability so that I will learn even more by using gamify training experience. If I don't manage to, to fix it, I will have always some hints to, that will suggest me uh, what to do. So this is the secure core warrior integration that uh, is available with uh, Fortify hosted and within a software security center. Okay. So from here, for instance, I will try to do some audit. Okay. So I can filter by critical and then I can select one a SQL injection, for instance, and then here yeah, I decide. Okay, for me, after reviewing it, I can see that this is an explodable. So for me, it's explodable, and then I want to assign this vulnerability to a developer. So I, I will look for uh, a developer that I want to assign the vulnerability to, that is Maori developer, this page. And then I can add also a comment and say, please fix it. And I will save it. Okay. So I comment it and I assign, assign to a developer. Okay. In here. 
So if I go back to to my clips as a Maori developer, I, I can use another plugin that is the remigration plugin. Okay, this is just to read the the result of a full scan done usually by initiated by continuous integration server. So if I connect to it by using Maori developer. I will get the, you see, I will have access as a Maui developer as well, only to the web application version I'm working on, that is web one. And then from here, I will have visibility, not to all the vulnerability find, but only to the SQL injection assigned to me. You see that I will see, for instance, uh, the comment of the Maui security gate, please fix it. Then I will have the possibility to navigate the vulnerability from the entry point uh, up to the sync point. I will have all the details and recommendations that I saw it early in the software service center. And then I will fix this vulnerability, okay? Within my ID, within my clips, without going out from my uh, developer environment. Once fixed, I will uh, check in the, the code again. Okay, and this is, will be a cycle that will be repeat continuously. Another option that I have as a security lead, for instance, if I go back to the software service center, rather than, for instance, assign the developer directly to the developer, I can use the integration that I have, for instance, with Jira. So from this vulnerability, the SQL injector, I can file a bug in here so that I will associate a vulnerability to a bug in Jira, okay? So I just need to uh, put the username and password. So I insert my credential, I will log in, and this, you see, I will select the project that I want to create a bug to in Jira. This can be automatically public as well. I can select the kind of priority, and I will submit it. Okay, you see? This create a file bug in Jira. You see that now there is a new bug, new button that I can see. And if I click on view bug, I will see a, the vulnerability created within uh, Jira. Okay, so within Jira, you will have the same information I can have in Software Service Center and Eclipse with all the details, recommendation I have. Okay, in here, we will have also the comment comment that the security leader uh, may have. And then I will have always uh, a deep link back to SSC in case I want more details. Earlier, we, we saw how uh, remote scan with scan central SAS uh, technology can be initiated by using the CLIPS uh, plugin. Usually the most common use that is that uh, uh, the SAS scan is initiated by the continuous integration server while uh, you do the checkout of the code, the build and compilation, you usually initiate uh, the full scan of 45 by using uh, a pipeline. In this case, we are using as a continuous integration server, Jenkins. And we see that you have a, 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 um, a job that is able to uh, initiate both the 45 study code analysis and also the software composition analysis with Sonatai. Why? Because within the Jenkins instance, I store both the Fortify Jenkins plugin and the Sonatai plugin. So if I go to see in the configure, you will see that uh, I do the checkout of the code by a repository. In this case, it is a subversion. And then you see that I, I start uh, the integration with the Nexus IQ of Sonatai so that uh, whenever I do the build, then I, I perform also a software composition analysis. And then I upload the result to simple parent in Nexus IQ server. Then there will be uh, an integration that will push the result from the Sonatype IQ server to Software Service Center as well. And then in parallel, I'm performing by using Jenkins uh, a remote scan by using all the scan central SaaS architecture integrated with Marvel, and then uploading the result to simple parent version one. Okay. So if I now go back and I build uh, this application, you will see that those uh, those uh, to scan Sonatai 45 study code analysis will be performed. Okay, 
And as soon as they will be performed, we will see first the, the result coming to the IQ server. So if we go in here, we see the IQ server sonotype where I created several applications within uh, this, and one of these is simple parent application. Okay. And then uh, you, you can see it in the dashboard all the common uh, vulnerability within all the components uh, that are belonging to the application in this IQ server. And then uh, in, in the report, you see that the, there is already a new uh, scan of sonotype coming from two seconds ago. Okay, so the sonotype has already been uh, uh, performed and the results have been uploaded to IQ server. But then, if I go back to Software Suite Center, to the Scan Central site, I should now be able to see that a new static scan is also being performed. Okay? So if I go in here, I can see I should now wait for a new scan of simple parent to, to arrive in it. So you see that the simple parent uh, scan is already arriving. So it's in, with the status scan running. And then in a few seconds, you will go to upload complete. That means that uh, the scan has been completed. We'll be able to see also the result of it. Okay. So this is all part uh, of the integration we did uh, in here with, with Jenkins. Okay, so this is what we, we, we see in here. As soon as the result is ready, we can see the, the result inside. So we can look for our application and we can go in here and see, for instance, the, the, the result of this application. We can see, for example, for, like for this application, if we group by analysis time, we have both 45 static code analyzer result, that's on a type as well. But moreover, you see that in here there is a, a, a tab that is called open source where, where we can see the sonotype result as well. So we, we see all the components that have been violated and with a vulnerability. So we see all the details of it with the external link uh, to, to Nexus or to common uh, weakness enumeration of meter. You see in here. So we have all the details of it. And then, moreover, apart from the details from here, we can see, as usual, the result is also in here. And so we can see the result in here with even more details. And we will see that there will be always a redirect to Nexus lifecycle in case we were even more details. We are now back to Software Security Center, the centralized web console that we talked earlier. And we now go to the Scan Central dust bar. That is the, the, the site where you, you start dust scanning, dynamic application security testing scanning. You can configure them. It's a web console for all the dust bar. Okay. So the first thing we will do, we will create a new scan. So we can easily and manually create a new scan, for instance, to scan the zero web application. Okay. So we will. Uh, choose the zero web application, the version number one. And then rather than use an existing scan setting files, we will create them from, from scratch. So we will uh, set a standard scan. We will specify the URL of the web application we want to start. And then we can restrict to directory and subdirectory. And we will tell to submit for trials. That means that as soon as the scan the result will be available to be published in the software security center. And then we select next. Okay. And we try to authenticate as well. So we'll select site authentication. Okay. We open the macro recorder and we will grab and record the, the login so that the, the dust scanner will try to, to find vulnerability also on the private part of the web application. So you see that the macro recorder is opening now, and we will be able to, to start recording. Okay, so you see there is a button to, to start the recording. 
So I select it and then I put the URL I want to start recording from. So you see that as, as soon as I type something, you see here on the left is everything is recorded. Then I will go to the singing uh, page. I will type username and the password and singing. You see that everything is recorded in there. Okay, so you see that we are logged in successfully. So we stop the recording. Okay, and we try to play it again. So you see that it will automatically play the login uh, macro. And then, and then it will ask me something um, to prove that I'm within the login page. So I will select, for instance, this item, account summary. So it automatically detected the logout connection. So I will do the last test, play it again. And let's see if it will play correctly. So everything looks like uh, uh, it succeeds. So the replay is succeeded as well. So then I will uh, save the, the macro recorder. Okay. You can save it. Uh, And that's it. So I saved the login macro recorder. So if I go back to the scan central dash, I can import what I just created, the login macro recorder. I can go next, next. Then I can even save uh, this uh, setting. Okay, so I will call it zero where scan setting. Okay, and I can even run it. So I can run it from here. So I will uh, uh, scan or uh, start this scan of zero web application. Okay, and I will call the scan zero web scan via scan central dot UI. And I will select any sensor that is available. I will run it. So now what, what we will see, you will see that here there will be a sensor okay that the scan will be assigned to okay why because there is a, a new scan 134 scan id that will be assigned to this sensor so you will see now a new scan with this id that is pending and then it will start running the scan how is possible because the scan central does is composed by an architecture where you can see all the sensor that you have, there is a controller behind that will dispatch the scan, uh, the dust scan to one of the available sensor. In, in here as well, you can set up your sensor pool as we do as we did before with the scan central SAS. So you can set up a new pool, okay, and assign a different sensor to this pool. Okay, you need to specify the limb and so on, and you can specify everything. Then, if you remember at the end of the preparation of the scan, we save it as a scan uh, as a scan setting. You remember that I, I, I save it as a scan setting so that you can go back to the scan settings and see uh, all the details. Okay, so you can edit again and see all the details of the scan setting that you just created. Okay. So if we go in here again, we will see that uh, now the state of change from pending to running. And then uh, in the next coming minus, you will see that new vulnerability has been found while it's running. Now that you can see that while the status is running, new vulnerability has been found. So we will see continuously new vulnerability to be found while it's running. So you have an overview of the scan uh, result as well why you are scanning in here. At the same time, I could use, for instance, another scan setting to run instead, not a standard scan of a web application, instead an API scan against pet stuff, for instance. So if, so if I open already in a scan setting that I already created, I can see that in this time, this time I don't choose the scan time standard, but I choose the scan type if it's scan. 
And then you see that I select, I could select Open API, Pause, Mano Data. In this case, I select Open API by providing the definition of the endpoints using the URL that I have it here. Is the post poster swagger JSON file. So let's just validate it. Okay. I submit for triage to see the result then late in Software Suite Center. I click next, 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 and I can run it from here. So I can even uh, specify uh, a name and I can tell Pestor API scan via scan central dust. You know, run it. So then if I go back to the scan, okay, I see that uh, the previous scan is, is still running, okay? And the next scan that I just initiated is not yet available because I only yet have one sensor available, okay? That is assigned to scan ID 134, okay? As soon as the, the, the scan will be complete and the sensor will be free, the new scan of PetStor API, REST API will be triggered so that we can see the result in here as well. So after a few minutes, you can see now that the, the scan is, uh, is complete in 10 minutes, okay? And so you, say, you see that the other scan that I previously request, the, the PetScore REST API scan is now proceeding. So it's now impending and then it will be uh, running as well, okay? In a in few minutes, it will, it will run as well. The same kind of uh, scan that I just initiated by using the Scan Central Dust UI, I could also initiate it by using the Jenkins, okay? So if I go to my Jenkins instance, you see that I have a pipeline just for to start the Pets of REST API scan by using the, the Dust integration we have with 45. So if I go, within it and I go to configure, I see that uh, the, the simple way to do it is by using a, a, a script and calling it and invoking the REST API to start the scan ID, okay? So the only two parameters I need, I will need the authentication token generated by 45 Software Suite Center. So if I go back to Software Suite Center administration, user token management, you see that I just created an authentication token to run Scan Central Dust. Okay, that is a temporary token lasting at most one day. And then the other things that I need, I need to tell which applications can send me I want to initiate. And you see that there is a CI CD token. Okay, and if you see this is a CI CD token ending with CDB6. Okay, and if I go back to the Scan Central Dust, Okay, to the static list, you see that the CDB6 is the uh, continuous integration developer identificator of the Pell Store API scan. So, if from, from here, from Jenkins, I will try to initiate such a scan, and you see that I put as a comment that this is a Pell Store API scan via Jenkins link. Okay, if I go back and I build it. You will see that the correct invocates such a REST API to initiate the scan central DAS by using the Jenkins integration. So if I go back to scan central DAS, the scan page, I see that the previous scan that I use, I initiate by using the scan DAS API, you already started, is running, already find few vulnerabilities. And now after a few minutes, this manual scan uh, will, will end it. And the automatic scan using the Jenkins integration will, will start running. So you see that the Pest, Pet Store API scan running by the Scan Central UI is completed already in two minutes. And now a new scan of the same Pet Store Wagger by using the Jenkins Linux integration, okay, is starting. So it's impending and then it will be start. So you see that you can invoke the scan, scan central dust uh, scanning by using either the scan central dust UI or whichever other system continuous integration server as I did with the, with the Jenkins as well. 
as soon as the results are ready, you can even see the, the result by, by within the application. So if we go and look for the zero application, we will see that we already have the, the result in here. Okay. So you can filter by critical as well. You can go to, to the vulnerability itself. Okay. You will see all the details of the vulnerability. In this case, it's a cross uh, site reflected. Okay, so you will have the, the all the um, request payload of this. You have the attack payload as well in here. It is encrypted. And then you will see that in re response, you see that an alert with a script has been triggered. So that's why it's a cross site script in reflected. And you have all the information here in the overview page uh, with information about the vulnerability, details, uh, recommendation on how to fix it. Okay, and you have also uh, additional rever reference to external link as well. And this is a way you see the result within uh, Scan Central Dust and Soft Security Center. Now, let's see how you can use the, the Scan Central Dust integrated with our new functionality that is called Functional Application Security Testing. It's a proxy that you can run integrated with your functional uh, testing and perform also security testing by using our simple proxy called FAST. Okay, so I already installed proxy, this proxy called FAST locally. Okay, so what I will do in here, I will call this FAST proxy listening to port 8087. I will connect to the scan central dust API, and then I will try to invoke a FAST scan by using the common line interface, by using the continuous integration token that already generated. And I will try to, to attach to the pet store scan as I did it before with Jenkins. So if I just uh, execute it, you will see that uh, this proxy fast will be listening to port 8086. So if I open my browser, okay, and I will go to the, to the setting, And I will look for the proxy. You will see that I'm um, I'm forced this uh, browser just for testing purpose to listen to the fast proxy that is in my local machine to port eight eighty seven. Okay. So if I go to my zero web application and I will try to navigate and so on, I will try to generate some traffic just for the sake of this uh, demo, okay? You will see in here that some traffic has been generated, okay? Then whenever I will finish my functional testing, because this fax process needs to be started wherever you do your functional testing, I will try to stop it, okay? Using the same port, okay? You see in here, I will try to stop it. And as soon as I stop it, you see that the, the recording of the proxy will be stopped and a new uh, workflow scan will be generated by the fast proxy. And this will be the scan ID uh, of the scan that is 137. So if we go back to our uh, software suite center to the scan central dust part, okay, in a, in a few minutes, we should see uh, a new uh, scan to be assigned to the sensor, a new scan arriving from the fast setting. So you see that a new scan, this time is, is not arriving from the scan that's the UI, but from the fast integration we had by using the command line interface. And this is just to prove the integration that we have between our functional application testing by using a proxy in the scan central dust architecture.